June 14th, 2024, part seven, segment one of the uh, 32 Ford Coupe from the two old guys' garage. This is Bob. I've just finished putting all the uh, Lincolns together, adjusting everything properly. All grease spots have been greased with the German spline grease. The alignment's been done and the Bushings have been replaced with steel bushings and new clips, which are tight. It's tough to get them in. Anyway, there it is. I've gone and shifted it through the gears. Also, I adjusted the back stops, those things there, which are adjusted in third and fourth gear for one turn off of zero clearance. So everything's set up, ready to go. One thing I did find out which surprised me is that the first, second, and third, fourth rods were in the right spot, did not need any adjustment, but the reverse rod length was significantly off, uh, more than I thought it should be. Anyway, it's adjusted now. It could possibly be a problem with trying to get it into reverse, um, not only a problem with the clutch. Anyway, this is a short segment, um, tuck it out, um, wire it up, I'm sweating, I gotta get something to drink. I'll catch y'all later. Bye bye. Hi, I'm back to part seven, segment one. Uh, after I ended it, I decided to uh, tighten up the uh, fittings to make sure I didn't forget it and get leaks when I put the thing together. And I went to fit the uh, throw bearing into the bell housing and put the hoses out. And I discovered that the uh, Borgenbeck pressure plate sticks out a lot. And I'm really not comfortable with how close these hoses are to the to the pressure plate. So I was going to run it out of this hole and this hole. And what I did was I popped the plug out of there and ran this hose through the uh, previously uh, what I thought to be the extra hole. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take and drill a hole here and pull this guy even closer so that it doesn't uh, come. I want to increase the safety margin of the line to the surface of the pressure plate. I'm just not too happy with where it is right there. Uh, the other thought is I do have custom grommets that I've made that fit these two things. And what I might also do is as a kind of a backup after I put them through the grommets I might put some sort of a clamp to make sure that the hose cannot possibly move in and put more slack inside the bell housing. Now unfortunately when I drill the holes in the bell housing the bell housing is tempered and you don't get spiral curls of uh, aluminum as you drill. You get little tiny tiny little chips which is typical of uh, cutting hardened aluminum. So I don't think I could get the drill at an angle to drill here anyway. And I don't want the pieces falling inside the bell housing because I couldn't I can't get at the bottom. It's a full 360. So unfortunately it means I'm gonna pull the bell housing, drill a hole here, check the fit again, and then continue on trying to get the transmission back into the unit beginning to think that uh, this whole purpose of uh, putting this bearing in as a this hydraulic slave is a pain in the friggin ass but no that's the way it is okay gonna end this here catch you later bye July 15th 2024 uh, part 7 segment 2 of the uh, hydraulic clutch for up bearing on the 32 Ford by Bob from the two old guys garage. Uh, I have taken the bell housing off and I have drilled an additional hole further back to the rear to increase the safety margin between the hoses and the spinning clutch. So I'm under here checking to see how the clearance is. The bell housing has been drilled, cleaned up, and bolted back on and torqued. And while I was under here, those six bolts that hold the 
cross mount the transmission, the rear, the rear mount on the transmission. I've been tightened up and torqued also. So I'm gonna crawl out here and I'm gonna make one more adjustment to the 90 degree angle. You can see that in the background kind of the center. I'm gonna put the angle back more to the rear of the bell housing to get as much as I can to keep that cable away from the pressure plate. <clears throat> And then I'm going to clamp the outside guys with two Adele clamps tied together. That will hopefully keep the hoses from moving around. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Ah, I'm back from under the car. Okay, that's how it's going to be uh, when the transmission is pushed in. you got to finagle the throw parent to get onto the transmission so it'll go in there. And as you can see, my new extra holes. That's the newest one right there. And they're as far back as I can make them. And that leaves me with two unused holes that I'll have to plug up. But that's about as good as it's gonna get. I still am not happy that the uh, lines are not that far from the spinning clutch, but when that guy gets installed on the transmission, it's pushed back, which is in the right direction. And then, uh, again, when it gets into position, these marks are to line up to the 10 o'clock guide pin. So I know where to uh, position between those two things. And then again, I'll clamp the outside of that. Okay. Here's a top view of the transmission cross member, the rear transmission cross member mount. And there's the torque down bolts. So, everything's torqued. Uh, I think I'm about ready to knock this off. I'm sweating like a stuck pig. As usual, it's hot. All right, so this should be the end of uh, part seven, segment two. I'll catch you all later. Take care. Hi, Bob, July 17th. Part 7, Segment 3 of the Clutch, Throw Up Airing, Flave, yada 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 on my 32 Coupe. Uh, anyway, here's what's happening this morning. Uh, I finalized the push rod on the Wilwood Master Cylinder, putting the right washers and shims and lubing it with the Molly German grease. So that's got done. And let's see. Oh, all right, and I took the molly lube and uh, lubed the splines on the clutch disc that's installed and on the pilot shaft of the transmission and the clutch fingers. Then, no more transmission there, I moved the transmission over to the car. Had to do it with a dolly because it was so goddamn heavy I couldn't lift it and move it myself. Anyway, I ah, then proceeded to work on trying to get it installed to the uh, transmission uh, bell housing. Uh, not quite there, as you can see. Uh, I don't think I'm be able to do it by myself. I've got a jack to help lift this up and down underneath, a strap that I use to lift it into basic position. Part of the problem is, is that a lot of the floorboard on the linkage side is very tight. There's not a lot of room. So, yeah, and you need wiggle room to get this guy lined up. Anyway, to take care of that, I did some selective trimming where I could. And then the last thing I did was I unconnected the lever arm for the 3-4 shift and let it hang down because it was hitting some of the goddamn thing. So that's where that's at. I think I'm going to ask Lou if he can come over and help me manhandle this son of a bitch so we can get it all the way in. Oh yeah, I also triple checked the flex line hydraulic fittings to the wheel cylinder to make sure that the those uh, risers that are direct were tight and the uh, um, AN4 connections were tight.
Hi, unintentional pause there. Apparently when a phone call comes in, uh, the video stops. Didn't know that. Okay, anyway, where the hell was I? Uh, I had tightened the, for the third or fourth time, I had tightened all the AN fittings on the, on the end of the slave cylinder inside the bell housing. Uh, I got this, the snout, the well, pilot shaft is resting, and the back is resting on the cross member here. So I don't have to worry that I'm using my hydraulic jack that leaks down. So I think that's about it in the car. Yeah, talking about the same subject, the transmission. Uh, when I put the transmission in many moons ago, I, I used stainless steel cap screws and they're one half 13 thread and they're one and a half inches. So in doing all this work on the bell housing and transmission, I measured the threads that the four T10 transmission bolts go into, found that they were longer. So what I did was I ordered hex one half 13 longer screws that actually now capture all of the threads inside the bell housing, but they protrude a little bit, like about a third of an inch. So the two flexible cables actually against the back of the bell housing go right over right over that transmission hole so what I did was I took this bolt you can see it's got a blue mark on it and I shortened it by four threads so that when the upper right one is installed. The threads will be basically flush or a little bit flush under that and not have to rub against the uh, the transmission, and the transmission, but the hydraulic flex lines. So, oh, let's see, I think, uh, I think that's about it for this. Okay, it's uh, the usual hotter than hell. Oh, it's only 92 in the garage. We're supposed to get some thunderstorms. I hope it would have cooled down, but it didn't happen. All right, so that's it for now. Catch you all later. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, back for a short tip. Uh, I needed to get some hand cleaner. Now, wiping grease off hands with alcohol or paint thinner is not really a good way to go. So I did some research and come to find out that this was highly recommended and in gallon size it sells at uh, Amazon it's in stock at Lowe's however their price is about hmm, just about $18 for one can I was doing food shopping the other day in Walmart and uh, went into their auto section and sure enough they had it but theirs is about $11 so that's interesting a gallon of this is what, 11 from 18 is like $7 cheaper in Walmart than it is at Lowe's or Amazon and I suspect probably Home Depot. Anyway, it's great stuff. Works as advertised. Okay. Now I can go in and not leave greasy fingerprints all over the house or so she claims. Thank you all. This truly is the